All right, so we know that lighting your shots is extremely important. But one thing I've been holding out on you and something we don't talk on too much is changing for multiple shots all within the same scene and then raising the question of, do we adjust the lighting accordingly for each and every individual shot? Well, my name is Brady and you came just in time to sit down, subscribe and learn cool things about cool stuff. A better way to put that would probably be, we're learning how to adjust our lighting for multiple shots that are all within the same scene in order to get great, beautiful lighting on all of your shots in the scene, all while maintaining great consistency. And we're doing this with just two lights and keeping pretty minimal and low budget. I get asked this all the time. How do I light for a wide shot when I also have a tight shot in the same scene? Do I light for the wide and then when I move in for the tight, keep the lighting as it is to keep perfect consistency? And all of these are great questions and great points and fun topics to touch on. So I knew that this video would be a really fun one for you. In this example, I found a large room to shoot in that looked phenomenal and gave us the ability to not only shoot a tight shot, but also shoot a wide shot as well. So I started with this establishing shot of Sarah coming in, walking through the frame, taking her seat and reading her book. And then from there, I moved into a tight showing her facial expression, as well as a tight over the shoulder of the book that she was reading. So we've got three different shots here, all with three slightly different lighting setups and a lot to cover. So let's go ahead and dive into the establishing shot lighting. It's obvious that with a wide shot, especially on a low budget, we're not left with a lot of options as to where we're gonna place our lights. And oftentimes you'll get a stand in the way or cords or the lights in general will be in the way. And it's very difficult to get full control over your scene's lighting. So let's talk about the first light that I added here to start to get control of our lighting, which was an Aperture 300X. And I had that off camera left, just out of frame, really just out of frame, as close as I could get it to the scene. And I had that boosted up high. And then I also added on a lantern attachment. And lanterns do a great job of evenly spreading light throughout the entire room that you're in. And we wanted to go for an ambient look. And my motivation for this lighting was the china balls that you see overhead. Obviously those aren't bright enough and soft enough, which is why we brought in lighting, but china balls are very soft, ambient. They're gonna spread light everywhere. And also these particular ones were very warm, like about 2,700 Kelvin, I would say. So I set the 300X to the same 2,700 Kelvin color temperature. So with the 300X and lantern in place, it does still look a little bit sourcey from the left side of the frame. It looks like there's some kind of light source punching in. And remember, the china balls are our motivation. So we want there to be a smooth, soft ambience throughout the room. So I wanted to bring in one more light source, which was Aperture's Nova P300C. And I had this light camera right just out of frame. And I matched up to the same 2700 Kelvin color temperature and boosted that up a good amount and blasted that through a five and a one diffuser disc. So just to soften it up a little bit more, the goal of this light was to just bring up that room tone a little bit going into that back right wall into the corner and even everything out. So with just these two lights in place, everything looks pretty darn good, all things considered with the minimal lighting and grip. But the problem really shows when we wanna move into some of these tight shots. And let's look at these two shots as if we didn't move the lighting whatsoever and we left it exactly as is. Everything looks very, very flat and you lose a lot of contrast, a lot of shadow, a lot of depth, and you can actually see in the shot of Sarah, the light in the background. So yes, I do move my lights accordingly for each and every shot, but I do so in a way that's gonna keep consistency in a sense of your light quality, meaning hard or soft, your color temperature, your lighting direction, so all these little adjustments, your viewer's not gonna know, but they're gonna make such a huge difference in your final product. So the first tight, the shot of Sarah's face, I took that 300X that was in the background and I swapped out the lantern attachment for a parabolic softbox. And I brought that in on Sarah's far side relative to the camera as we always do. And I brought that softbox as close as I could to her face without being in frame. That way the source is as large as possible and as soft as possible. And then. Height wise, I brought it up to about a 45 degree, still kind of top lit, but still from the side, because remember the light is coming from the china ball, so it wouldn't make sense to be extremely side lit. You still wanna have a little bit of toppiness to it. Lastly, I added some negative fill as well on her shadow side, just to help that roll off from the highlights into the shadows. You can tailor this to your taste, even add some bounce in if you like. So with the key light in place, let's go ahead and talk about the background and how we're gonna light that, because before we had to light the entire room, but now that we're moving in on a tight, we don't need to worry about lighting the entire scene, just the background of what's seen in frame. So I took that Nova P300 that I had before and I brought that around 
to now just out of frame on camera, right? And I had it through the same diffusion at the same color temperature and just subtly brought up the room tone in the background on the back wall. You wanna remember that you're not making your background brighter than Sarah herself or your subject theirself because it's a subtle room tone. It's just a subtle ambience that you see as if the light is coming from the china balls. And then the key light is gonna be the main focus of saying like, hey, look at me. I'm the subject lit. That's where the eyes are supposed to go. So don't go too harsh on your background fill. That's the only two lights that I used in this shot. So let's go ahead and flip things around, take a look at the book shot and talk about what we did to make some changes for this particular shot. For this one, I really wanted a lot of shadow, some depth, some texture, some contrast on the wood, the pages of the book, Sarah's arm. So to do that, I took the 300X, kept the softbox on it, but I brought it down a couple of feet as well just to get a little bit more side light coming because that's what's really gonna cast the shadows across the shot. And then one thing that I did differently for this shot was really isolate the spread of light as it's coming out the softbox. And to do that, I took a grid and just put it on top of the dome. And now we're really gonna isolate the direction the light is coming from and you're not gonna have a lot of spill from the softbox filling in the shadows that you don't want. And to add to that, I put a little bit more negative fill on frame right on the shadow side just to help that roll off into that deep contrast. And then as for the P300 that we've been having as the background light, I guess it didn't really matter too much. I think I just had it on splashing in the background, just left on, but I was only shooting at the table and at the book here, so a background light doesn't really apply. And that's really all that I did to light this entire scene. It's certainly possible to light your entire scene with just two lights. The important thing to remember is that you wanna treat each and every shot like it's its own project and adjust the lighting accordingly for each and every one, but still keeping in mind the consistency and making sure that your lighting choice makes sense. And don't be afraid to experiment with moving your lighting around for each and every shot, for the wides, for the tights. And please, I love seeing you utilize all the tips that I throw onto the channel. So please tag me in them or use the hashtag Brady's Classroom if you haven't before. But that's really all that I have for you all today and all for this week. So I hope that you found this helpful, educational, enjoyable. And if so, like, share, and subscribe. Share it with a friend. Do whatever you want to do. But until next week, this class is dismissed. See you later.